Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko alleged that the opposition planned to seize a district in the west of the country and request support from NATO troops. Representatives of the Belarusian opposition, who have gone abroad, want to seize one of the regions in the country, declare a new government there and send NATO troops there, President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko said, at least to seize one, I don't know why they chose it, the Kobrin district, they talk a lot about it there. But it's not near the border itself. There are closer to the borders. No, the Kobrin district. Seize, declare power, contact NATO, send in troops, Lukashenko said, speaking at the All Belarusian People's Assembly. Lukashenko also appealed to the oppositionists who are planning a forceful seizure of power in Belarus, with an appeal not to put their relatives who live in the country at risk. You have some property here. I advise you to forget about her, but don't put your relatives at risk. The president of the republic said, the day before, Lukashenko said that the population of Belarus has never lived as well as it does now, while the country must develop further one way or another. He also expressed confidence that the real power of the Belarusian state is measured by its desire to make the world a better place. Lukashenko complained about 120,000 Ukrainian troops on the border with Belarus and announced a prevented UAV attack from Lithuanian territory on targets in Minsk. It was not clear if Lukashenko provided any evidence for such a plan. All Belarus's main opposition figures are in prison or have been forced into exile. U.S. military is using the Ukraine conflict to test a new artificial intelligence technology. The U.S. military is reportedly using the Ukraine conflict to test a new artificial intelligence technology that helps detect targets on the battlefield using drone footage, the New York Times reported. Dubbed Project Marvin, research into the technology was initially picked up as a government contract by Google six years ago, according to the outlet. However, after pushback from engineers and employees who do not want to take part in building an AI tool for military use, the tech giant stepped away from the project which was picked up by other contractors. Now the technology is being used on the front line in Ukraine, the New York Times claims, as Western and Ukrainian officers, along with some of Silicon Valley's top military contractors, are exploring new ways of finding and exploiting Russian vulnerabilities. So far, the results of the testing have reportedly been mixed. While Project Marvin allows commanders to identify the movements of Russian forces and use AI algorithms to predict their next steps, it has apparently been difficult to bring 21st century data into 19th century trenches. One of the main barriers, the New York Times said, is that due to restrictions imposed by US President Joe Biden, the US military can only provide Ukrainians with a picture of the battlefield without giving precise targeting details. It is also unclear if the new technology would even be able to change the course of the conflict given Russia's ability to quickly adapt to technologies being used by the Ukrainian side. When new technology meets the brutality of old-fashioned trench warfare, the results are rarely what Pentagon planners expected, the outlet said. 
Nevertheless, the Ukraine conflict remains a bonanza for the U.S. military in the minds of American officials and a testing ground for rapidly evolving technologies. At the end of the day, this became our laboratory. Lieutenant General Christopher T. Donahue, who commands the U.S. Army's 18th Airborne Division, told the New York Times. Russia, meanwhile, has repeatedly decried increasing U.S. involvement in the conflict. Moscow describes it as a proxy war being waged by Washington and its partners.